Hello Dicks and Ghouls, as you may know, I'm in Erdathan. Old school April Erdathan, organized by Kelsey from uh, Slime and Slashers. And this is the 11th of April, so we're 11 days into this Erdathan. And I'm happy to announce that I've done, I believe, all of the Erdathan prompts, except for the bonus one, and a lot of the Watchathon. So let's, let's have a catch up. I know this video won't be uploaded on April 11th because I already uploaded the video today. And no, it's not me reading an action thriller by a well known YouTuber. This video is coming soon, the last one, and yes, then we can get back to Grim Raids. Um, so let's see the prompts and what I've read. I've read The Cuts by Nick Sarman, which I hoped it was fun trash and also part of my prompt to kill the my TBR. I'm planning to do a monthly prompt of read a book you've got in your TBR so you can get rid of it. And for this month I chose a trashy book, a book you know it was trash, good trash, hopefully. This was not good trash, this was hilariously bad and also dynamically boring. I've got a whole reading vlog of me being disappointed by it, so at some point I'm going to upload it. Don't know where, but what can I say? Uh, but this covers the animal attack um, prompt, so that's one point. Yeah, it was published in the 70s, so not 80s book. Then I got uh, The Stepbrother by Arl Stein, it's a part of the new Finnish Street. Yes, it's translated. I got this on Saturday, and it's a long story how and why. And yeah, it will be part of the next uh, book haul I'm doing for the first uh, quarter of the year, I guess. So this was uh, this was a tough one because you know what? It's it's about a girl who is hypnotized, and she has flashbacks to another life and a boyfriend and a stepbrother, and it gets complicated. It was a breezy read, 150 pages long, very easy to read. If I've read it when I was 14, I would have loved it. However, I'm 40. So yeah, uh, yeah, I think I'll pass Arl Stein for the indefinite future. It's just not for me, and I get it. Uh, but however, this one covers a lot of prompts. It covers um, prompt 6, uh, read a fair street book. It's a new first trade, but whatever. Um, it also covers the Teen Witch because it's a female because it's a, there's supernatural events in it. It's um, reincarnation, and also it was published in the nineties, so prom date is ticked. And Buffy the Vampire Slayer a book with a female protagonist. It's covered. So yeah, that covers four um, prompts in one day. If I was a readathon regular, I would read all the first time, but I'm not. Then I read uh, Fragments of Terror by Junji Ito, that's the Greek translation, and it was my first Junji Ito, and oh my, that book was... Um, yes, there's a lot of hype around Junji Ito, on horror tube and people are loving his comics and I get why these stories are um, very Japanese horror very off very I won't say otherworldly they're just from a different culture and even though it was a manga I liked how it felt adult like people in adult situations not adult like tentacles or something. I mean, people with uh, affairs, divorces, and ordinary problems that uh, devolve into some crazy situations. And I really like the visuals, how Junji Ito warps the compositions of his comics to create these otherworldly effects. I enjoyed it a lot. It covers Prompt One because it's got. Um, are you afraid of the dark uh, prompt the read a comic book so yeah that's it so we've done um, almost every prompt up to this point then are the offering 
by Gerald Soster. It's the second Gerald Soster book I've read. Um, was not sure about the first one because it was kind of metatextual and I was not completely aware of what I was referencing. This one is, um, I'd say it's punk rock Wickerman. If I would sell it, but it's not. Um, it's about a couple who moves into a house and um, a punk rock star used to live there but died under mysterious circumstances and people in the village won't talk about it and also there is some sort of a matriarchal society and something sinister happening and it's a very um, of its time book it's published in the 80s so that covers from two uh, book published or set in the 80s and also it covers the nostalgic technology because of the straight razor uh, well yeah technology is kind of uh, you know kind of um, stretch on this one it's a razor but it's nostalgic for horror fans because no serial killer ever used a big razor uh, and also the blood on the cover on the back is um, is raised so there's texture on the cover that feels good um, I like the cover a lot the book was so so I'll probably do a review for it sometime in the future uh, it was interesting for uh, reasons but as a horror story it fell flat which is a saying uh, it's got a lot of uh, stuff going on with it and I appreciate a lot of the symbolism and the meta stuff of it but not the story because it was uh, sort of predictable uh, except for the ending the ending was kind of um, interesting to see how it ends because there was a lot of openings and the way it went was all right it made sense for its era however uh, i felt like it was very short too 150 pages long so a very breezy read um, but I could not exactly connect with the characters despite being able to connect with the situations. However, this means that I've done all 10 prompts and I have to submit for the rid of them. Uh, currently, I'm reading Crash by James Ballard. I uh, picked that one for the nostalgic technology because it features cars that you can actually crash book was published in the, the early 70s. I don't think there will be many prompts on this one and this book is sick. This book is really disturbing. Um, I've read uh, the first chapter and it's like... What am I reading? That's, uh, that's Eslord stuff. And definitely worth a read. I have watched, I have watched the movie by David Cronenberg. It has an amazing soundtrack. Uh, great acting. It was out there too, and the book is also out there. It's um, definitely a review. I will do when I'm done with it. So now let's go to the WhatsApp prompts and see what I did. I won't go in order. I'll just pick a prompt and talk about it. Uh, the WhatsApp prompt one was a Goosebumps episode. I watched the season one episode two, the Cuckoo Clock of Doom. It was about a boy who is bullied by his kid sister and their father bites a cook clock that they touch and it sends them back in time. It was okay, it was fun. If I had watched this episode when I was, uh, I don't know, when I was playing, I think I was playing when I was 12 or 13. No, scratch that, it was play playing in 1995. I was watching The X-Files back then. I have watched some Goosebumps episodes uh, when I was a kid. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was watching The X-Files at this point, so yeah, I was too old for this. And that's why I'm not nostalgic about Goosebumps, because I was in the hard drugs. Uh, hard, hard, the harder horror stuff when I was 13. Um, I guess it was just before I was X-Files. Because I started with Next Files when I was 95, June. So, yeah, odds are I have watched Goosebumps before the X Files, the first season. I cannot recall this episode. I recall the episode where uh, there is this boy 
and realizes that the librarian is a monster. I don't know which is one, I couldn't find it. That's the only Goosebumps episode I do remember watching. That's, I guess, um, the microphone is a bit away from me. So yeah, I hope the sound is better now. Never mind. Uh, I haven't done Watchathon. No, I did Watchathon Round 2 yesterday. I was Ghost House by Umberto Lenzi. It was a um, host um, prompt. Uh, I think it was Alex the Bookibus that suggested this one. And I can see why that movie was insane. It was a haunted house movie uh, with a creepy doll. It was like. It was better than Annabelle. I think it was better than any Annabelle movie. Uh, but was a nonsensical Italian horror movie from the 80s. It was kind of gory, uh, fun, uh, all over the place. Uh, you know how it goes. It had some good kills, which is always great. It was a lot of fun. So that covers Prom 2. Uh, Prom 3 was an episode of the 90s Nickelodeon. Uh, initially, I was happy because there is one Nickelodeon show I would like to watch more and that's Avatar The Last, Airbe the Last Airbender uh, which was not a 90s um, series so I went for an episode of uh, Bob Squarepants which was nonsensical I have got some of it when I was playing um, never was a fan so yeah, I just did it and it's okay. I just, I just did it for the prompt. And I think it covers the cartoon too. So yeah, uh, right. I mean, I have no nostalgia for Nickelodeon. I, I, I was watching cartoons until 95 or something, maybe 96. Maybe I was watching uh, the X-Men and the Spider-Man shows, but that was it. Um, so it's kind of hard. Um, episode 4 what's a movie TV show episode set in the 80s 90s or what's a new adaptation of an old school movie show or book I picked a movie I have not watched uh, because I wanted to do a bonus prompt of someone you had a crush to so I watched Jennifer 8 because I do remember this tra the trailer for this movie playing and thinking that Uma Thurman was very beautiful or at least a very obvious body double was very beautiful because yes, there was the scene and before you're like it was on the trailer what about the kids? I'm, I live in Europe people know what's also a movie uh, yeah uh, so that movie was kind of a disappointment uh, to be honest it was very well made the photograph was amazing but the pacing was abysmal the editing was kind of off, kind of junky because it felt confusing at times. There was very little of the serial killer because yes, all right, it's a 90s movie. So a serial killer thriller is a must watch, especially if there is some erotic aspect to it, which is also very 90s. And uh, I haven't watched this movie, so it was very important to see it, finally. Um, and yes, everybody remembers this movie for the bathtub scene, for obvious reasons. And I wish there was more of it, not because of the nudity, but because this scene is exactly what this movie would sell to the audience. The, the horror of the protagonist being blind and vulnerable. And we can see the threat approaching, but she cannot. And there is, oh, there is another scene like that towards the end of the movie, uh, after the big reveal of who the killer is. But yeah, it was a little too late. I would like more thrills. Uh, it was not a great pick, but whatever. It it went off the bucket list. What was that from Prom Five? Moonwoods. Um, all right, I went to the movies for this one, uh, and I watched uh, the Fellowship of the Ring the extended edition and I hope I'll be able to go and see the other two movies uh, because it's very hard to land a ticket and I'll be away from home for this week so I'm not sure if I'll get it to the two towers but Fellowship of the Ring was an amazing movie I enjoyed it every, every, every moment of it the extended edition makes the movie even better it makes all those character moments stand out and it was great 
how it was the extended version of this one ages ago. I'm not sure I have watched the extended versions from the other two movies, so it will be a great opportunity. The other two movies are not that great as the first one. The first one is awesome. I'll die on the hill that uh, the movie was better for this one, not the other two, but probably it's another video I should do because it goes kind of deep and I have changed my mind about something. I have this belief that uh, yes, The Fellowship of the Ring is the best uh, version of Lord of the Rings for 20 years and this year, last year actually, the late um, towards the end of 2020 was like, no, I was wrong. But that's not the topic, we'll talk about this at some point. So yeah, definitely a great movie watch. Uh, and nostalgic because uh, I watched this movie when I was 18 with um, after I've moved to another town I had uh, I finally had I was around I was in a uh, cinema with full with people who are as weird as me and in the geeky stuff something they have never felt before so yeah it's kind of nostalgic I think that um, if you're doing a nostalgic watch a thon or read a thon, it's good to be invested in what you're watching, not just taking prompts. Uh, prompt 6. What's an episode of any Disney Channel show from the 90s? And for this one, I chose to watch the first episode of The Gargoyles, a show that I do remember starting to watch when it was playing on TV but then I did not watch much of it either because I was not um, because not there was some schedule I had activities to do uh, when there were cartoons on TV so I've missed that, that one and I said okay it's important to watch one of these one of my fr best friends was a big fan of it so I had it in my bucket list and I said I'll watch episode one and I ended up watching three episodes and if it was not a watchathon and feeling, taking prompts, I would be still watching episodes. It was very good. It was Disney's uh, attempt to do a show like X Men or The Amazing Spider Man or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I like the whole Scottish aspect, the out of time gargoyles in modern New York. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll do much more watches of it. Probably I'll do all five episodes I can take off for April and then um, watch the rest in May. Uh, Prom number seven, watch any 80s movie or TV show episode. I haven't done this one yet. Uh, probably I'll watch... Uh... Oh yes, I have done that. I've watched The Ghost House, so that's ticked off. Um, Prom 8 is watch any 90s horror movie. I haven't. Uh, Jennifer 8 does not count as horror movie. Uh, I may do another bucket list pull and watch Arachnophobia. Uh, which I do remember the trailers when I was a kid and I've never watched this movie, so it's a great opportunity to watch it. And Prop 9 is watching the 90s movie or TV show episode. I have watched an episode of Deadly Games, which is another show I've watched as a kid and I want to rewatch at some point and it features uh, Christopher Lloyd, uh, Doc Brown from Back to the Future, where he plays a video game villain coming to life, and that series is just... It gets science so wrong, it's only a 90s show could do. I mean, I should probably watch the entire show and do a video about it, because that, that show is insane. That show is about... Um, the mother physicist who has divorced and in order to get over his trauma he makes a video game about casting people from his life as villains as a way to psychoanalyze himself and there are a lot of symbolic ways to defeat them however an experiment goes on and the villains come out of the screen and they interact with real life and try to do evil stuff and he, his ex-wife and his best friend are trying to stop them and it gets uh, quantum physics, video games and psychology so wrong, it's very 90s. I have to watch this more of it. 
Uh, it's it's a hoot. So yeah, that's um, my wrap up for the first eleven days of April. Um, I'll see what else I can do with you know adding more points for my team. Um, yeah. So how are you doing with your prompts? Are you done yet? Uh, leave a comment below if you're part of the readathon, and I'll see you soon. Stay spooky.